The piezoelectric effect, discovered in the 18th century, is a phenomenon present in certain materials that produce an electric field or charge when subjected to stress or deformation. The reverse is also true, i.e. an electric charge or field applied to PZ materials causes a slight structural deformation along a preferred axis. I note this because it delights me to no end that a 700 plus year old technology may help solve a 26th century problem. Test results just came in from the new polymerized lithium niobacine, CF ferrocene. This material was developed for discharging the vast amount of static energy that plagues ships in slipstream space. I wonder why no one thought to investigate the reverse effect of this material. It actually has voltage-induced deformation characteristics, several orders of magnitude greater than any PZ material ever discovered. If this material were used as a sheath or suit of artificial muscle, when worn, it could effectively increase the linearly coupled strength of a Gen 2 Orion soldier tenfold or more. I'm reluctant to call it armor, which would give my military counterparts imprudent fantasies about this technology. Manufacturing an entire suit at this point is cost prohibitive. The Vice Admiral assures me that this will be addressed in the production phase of the project. I have my doubts given the vast scope of my request. I'm convinced there is a way to couple this new technology to a wearer's nerve inductions, positive feedback, to dramatically increase reaction speed. See notes in your yet. Still, I have yet to solve the energy requirement. Any human-sized suit would need a small nuclear or fusion reactor to generate the required power. Expensive? And who would willingly strap on a reactor backpack? Theoretical properties of threaded or woven materials intriguing. Simulations demonstrate limited geometric increases in strength and mobility. How to regulate geometry. Need to follow up on the standard PZ effect on this configuration. Convert impact energy into a potential power source? Doubtful. Ask Deja about research on vacuum energy. Scan. Time slice 099312. Of the recollection map of Pythagorean theorem derivation, Subject 492b. Third field applied here. Application of asymmetric field probes at cerebellum anterior focuses maximum signal strength at primary hippocampus sites. Dual probes yield best results, but here required a third to boost the signal as it propagated through an extended cascading network. Hippocampus converts short to long-term memories and is a key to mapping the engrammatic networks distributed through the brain. How is that map stored? Must research. Output shunted for AI analysis. Old model TX117 converted. This is a particularly juicy entry. In it, she explores the new polymerized lithium niobacine material for use as movement systems or artificial muscles. She talks about using it as a sheath or suit of artificial muscles and suggests that it could amplify the wearer's strength by tenfold or more. This is particularly interesting because it is known that Mjolnir only amplifies strength by a factor of five, and I do not believe it is in Halsey's ability to overestimate. This implies that a further five factor increase has been lost somewhere along the line. My personal perspectives on this, given my knowledge of materials and the science involved, is that a fair portion of this power output may be taken up simply by the power to rate ratio. Given Mjolnir weighs half a metric ton, moving the suit and overcoming its own inertia will inevitably take a notable portion of the power away. But then this suggests that lighter suits equals more power output, which is very much in line with what I have discussed before regarding armor specializations in-game and how that could influence gameplay. 
I've popped a link in the description if you'd like to find out more, but one of my primary points I made was that, in theory, a Spartan could wear just the tech suit of Mjolnir with the fusion plant attached in a low-profile backpack and perhaps even an energy shield harness, and the suit would be able to function like a lightweight scout variant, allowing the user greater mobility and, due to the dramatically altered power-to-weight ratio, faster reflexes and higher power output, allowing the user to outmaneuver any other Mjolnir suit in use but at the cost of the protection granted by its heavy armour plating. But going back to this insert, the reduction from tenfold or more to only fivefold in the suit could also be explained and justified by the amount of electrical energy available. It seems likely that the miniaturization of the fusion power plant for Mjolnir had the trade-off of massively reducing the power densities of the output power, thus meaning that all of the Mjolnir systems had to be more conservative in its functions so as not to draw too much of a load from the power plant or to drop available energy to other systems. These two factors in tandem likely contribute to the final production models of Mjolnir being much more conservative in their force amplification of the user's strength. This, again, calls into question whether these energy requirements have been met and exceeded in the Gen 3 suit we see Chief wearing in Halo Infinite leading to the distinct possibility that the Gen 3 suit is going to make Chief over twice as powerful as we have ever seen him, at the very least. If this is the case, that's going to be a truly epic suit. After this, Halsey surmises that it is possible to connect the movement systems directly to the brain of the wearer, and immediately begins research into the brain, and likely the early concepts of the Spartan neural interface. She then directs her attention back to the force amplifying systems and conceptualises the abdominal area of the suit, which even in real life presents a significant problem for all attempts at the powered exoskeletons due to the spine being a compound joint with multiple points of articulation, all of which are centred within the body as opposed to, say, parallel to the joint in the case of the knees or the elbows. She seems to have been conceptualising a woven musculature which would take the weight of the armour above the waist and channel it into the weight-bearing structures of the lower body armour systems, without sending undue forces and stresses through the body of the wearer. Personally, I can think of at least two different solutions to the issues that she inevitably encountered here, which would have solved the problem by actually using a quote-unquote hard but articulated structure to weight-bear, rather than woven soft musculature structure she ultimately opted with. She also recognises that the piezoelectric effect was also reversible and that there may have been a possibility of using large impacts and deformations of the piezoelectric material to actually generate energy, though she also promptly rejects this train of thought. She finishes again by looking at the brain, and in particular the cerebellum, the part of the brain responsible for voluntary movement, and performs deep brain scans. The person in question isn't identified, but it is likely either a living volunteer or even herself, as the brain in question recalls Pythagorean theorem. She also rather worryingly takes a look at the hippocampus and considers whether or not she can crack into it with her conceptualised neural interface. Her intentions here may have played into the indoctrination of the Spartans that we have so little information about. If it is, then what Halsey seemed to be doing at the time was making the neural interface able to access the hippocampus and thus be able to tap into the long-term memory centres of the brain. In regards to indoctrination, this could possibly and potentially be exploited to either alter or erase long-term memories of the Spartans, perhaps their lives before conscription, or implanting memories of events that never took place, perhaps even encounters with insurrectionists that are designed to invoke a hatred for their intended targets. Whether or not this course of action was pursued is unclear, but what is clear is that the Spartan Neural Interface does indeed access some of the deeper brain material within the hippocampus, and it is on record that before the Spartans tried on Mjolnir for the first time, they received what Halsey called subliminal training during their last cryosleep. This likely included somewhat downloading information to the Spartans' brains on how to interface with Mjolnir seamlessly. This, while extraordinarily interesting, also has some worrying consequences if abused, and it is likely, having been working for Oni, that this particular aspect of her research may indeed have been used to questionable effect.